These are the stories. There is a foundation out there that helps you get back into it. Of organizations making a difference. What really limits our ability to do something is people's imagination. And empowering others across Canada. When I get into that sledge, I'm free, man. I'm playing hockey. It's a great organization and it's worth supporting. In our community. I'm warming up. I'm Sarah Tuberty. We are at the Kingston Circus Arts in Kingston, Ontario. I am somebody who um, was born without fingers on my left hand, so being able to access the aerial arts has been a big challenge. I have been coming for about seven months now. I drive up here from Philadelphia because I don't have access to anybody like Erin in the United States. Yeah, just reach up as high as you can on the front of the hoop. Great. My name is Erin Ball. I am the owner of Kingston Circus Arts. Erin has been teaching aerial arts since 2010, beginning with her first company called Twisted Circus. I had been doing um, personal training and teaching group fitness classes. I went to a busker's festival in Kingston and I saw a couple doing partner acrobatics and I just thought, that is it, that's what I want to do. And here I am today with Kingston Circus Arts. We've been in our own space now for almost two years. After a terrible accident six years ago, Erin had both of her lower legs amputated. Since getting back on her feet, she's been committed to finding a way to making circus accessible to anyone who wants to take part. I do think that everybody can do circus. If somebody can move and somebody has the desire, I think that it's, it's open to all bodies. There's some like pretty significant barriers that I've experienced and then haven't really seen anybody else like me. So then when I found Erin, I just like cried with happiness because it's like there is somebody else like me that does have a different body that has figured out how to make this like really beautiful circus performance so accessible. I am getting the silk set up. I was taking a lot of classes and trying to work with a lot of different coaches to help me. And I found that a lot of people really didn't know how to work with me. I realized that there was a gap in terms of working adaptively in circus. Often I'll go into a class and it's like, okay, everybody is gonna run and jump, but you, you're gonna do this other thing because you know you can't do those things. And I just found that felt horrible. And so thinking about other people who are being singled out, I just realized that I wanted to create a change in that. That was great, Sarah. What I really like about the aerial arts is that this is a chance where people that do have um, sort of different bodies and different experiences can really be able to showcase that, um, that they're able to access the arts in a different way. Okay, Annie, how are you doing today? I'm hoping that I can get it together today. <laughs> My name's Annie Peacefast. I'm 68 years old. Annie is a retired teacher who lost her right leg in a motorcycle accident just over two years ago. She's been coming to the circus school for just over a year. We're going to start with a few climbs. Annie is working with her coach, Kathy, on the aerial silks. I was told after the amputation by a doctor that uh, women over 65, when this happens, will be in a wheelchair the rest of your life, which, yeah, that wasn't going to happen. Remember, few hand movements, as few as possible. So I needed somebody to talk to, and they introduced me to Aaron. It was so cool to be able to do something with my body that didn't matter that I didn't have that leg. I'm pretty sure she saved my sanity and probably my life. Kathy Ruck is a performer and coach at Kingston Circus Arts. Okay, let's have you do some climbs. All right. I started doing circus about uh, nine years ago, and if you do the math, that makes me having started at about age 59. Not only is Kathy a coach, she's also Aaron's mom. And when Aaron first right. became interested in circus, Kathy was none too pleased. I've never liked watching Aaron do dangerous things. <laughs> So to see her doing circus, I didn't want to be part of it. After some persuasion, Kathy decided to give it a try and quickly changed her tune. I loved it. I just fell in love with it. I was addicted to it. Kathy is coaching Annie on her routine for the upcoming winter showcase. How's that tip? It feels like it's in a better place. Yeah, you look good. Annie's a joy to teach because just to see how she can move and it helps me to see how to adapt things, and it's a candle, straight up and down. Every part of what I'm doing is really pretty 
brand new, figuring out how to get up into the silks and wrapping knots on my feet and tilting and twisting and hanging upside down is brand new. I still don't feel like I tipped that properly. I'm feeling a little bit discouraged today that I won't get it, but we'll keep working on it. <laughs> Kathy's very patient with me. The students at Kingston Circus Arts have been preparing for a showcase that is just over a week away. Reach up as high as you can. Yes, awesome. I am working towards the winter showcase um, and I am going to be performing on the silks, which has been really hard for me. I am nervous. I do need to clean up a lot of parts of my performance. One of the ways that uh, I try to make things accessible here at Kingston Circus Arts is thinking about the apparatuses and how that can be adapted to the student rather than the student having to adapt to that. Um, for example, Sarah, we've worked with the hand loop. She'll put her wrist in it, she'll put her elbow in it or her armpit, and that has created all kinds of opportunities for her to um, make some of the more traditional shapes that wouldn't otherwise be available to her. I just really appreciate how intentional Erin has worked with the disability community. She has really connected with lots of different other performers who have a variety of different disabilities and has really worked to build a space that is truly accessible and welcoming. When you walk in here, you know that no one is going to tell you you can't do something. How do you feel? Um, I did the drop, which is yeah. so exciting. because. I'm scared of that, I let go. Um, I do have a drop that comes in pretty early on in my performance, um, and drops scare me so much. It's very normal. Uh, most people are scared of drops when they learn them. I know those points that I can clean up and make it better. Great. Austin Sparks, who's also performing in the showcase, is Erin's partner in circus and in life. We met at an amputee conference. She had an aerial portable rig set up, and she put on a performance. My only experience with other amputees was through adaptive skating uh, for the last five years or so, and I've been an amputee for coming on 10 years. Austin lost his right leg to cancer as a teen. We kind of headed off, so I figured, why not give it a try? I ended up loving it. He is juggling all the time in his spare time. We do partner acrobatics together. We're working on a duo trapeze routine for the showcase. This will be my first circus performance, and I'm quite excited, a little bit nervous as well. Austin, do you want to try running your hoop act? Yes. As well as the duo trapeze routine, Austin will also be performing solo on the hoops. There's so much room for creativity, and it's a lot of fun. He really loves spinning. It's amazing to watch. He's definitely the fastest spinner here. <laughs> but training can also come with its share of setbacks. A couple of days ago, I did injure my shoulder, um, the pre-existing injury. We're just trying to take it easy and monitor that, and we'll see how it goes. How's your shoulder feeling? It's a little sore. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. We're at Kingston Circus Arts, and the students are less than a week away from the Winter Showcase. Kathy is helping Annie with her performance piece. The star shape, yes. I'm working on a piece for the showcase. It has taken me since September to figure out a way to climb in silks, because it's hard. Annie's come a long way, and we're working on keeping her balance, realizing that the closer you stay to the silks, the more your balance is going to be in check. Erin has worked hard to make her circus school accessible to anybody, no matter what their age or circumstance. She knows firsthand what it's like to go from being completely able-bodied to not after a terrible accident took both of her lower legs. I uh, went for a walk in the woods. My feet got wet, and I didn't know at that time how quickly frostbite could happen. So I sat down for a while. I was going through a really rough period. When I went to get up, I couldn't feel my feet, and I couldn't walk on them. So I tried to crawl. Um, but because I was crawling, I got turned around and got completely lost. And I started screaming for help, and nobody came. Erin was eventually found by a search and rescue team after she'd been missing for six days. With a body temperature of only 19 degrees, it was a miracle that she was alive at all. My name is Jan Murphy, and I'm a former editor at the Big Standard in Kingston. 
people don't go missing very often for very long. When they found her, it was, it was a miracle. Um, so it became uh, a little bit of a happy ending that she was found alive, even though unfortunately she suffered some very serious injuries. I had both of my lower legs removed. And after that point, uh, sorry. <laughs> At that time, I didn't really know anything about disability and I thought that that was the worst thing that could happen to me. She struggled. She was very open about her struggle with losing both of her feet, very depressed. And then you watch the transition of her coming out of that depression and realizing that, hey, I'm alive. I had never seen anybody do circus with a different body. I couldn't imagine it, but I made the decision that I was going to try living and that meant moving and doing circus. I love training on aerial silks. I try to do it as often as possible, usually every day. I tend to use a scissoring action of my legs to wrap the fabric and get up there. And then it is a series of wraps, drops, flips, creating different shapes. Jan approached Eric about writing a column in the paper to tell her side of the story. From the first column that she wrote for the wig, which, you know, she wrote about her tragedy, and I watched her gain confidence with each column and open up more and more, and it became very inspiring, and she became this advocate. Erin became more than just a voice for Adaptive Circus and was becoming a leader in the community as well. Her accessibility has always been an issue in Kingston. There have been many uh, front page news stories over the years about how inaccessible Kingston was at one point. The evolution of Erin's column, her voice came through as a really strong advocate for accessibility. She challenged the city to be better. She challenged other people to be kinder. So she's, you know, used her column for good. One leg forward, and whenever you're ready, pick your other foot up. My name's Cheryl Dawson, and I am a local high school teacher. To have something like Erin's circus arts allows people a chance to be physically active, to connect socially, to find their own personal strengths. We sometimes take for granted that opportunities for physical activity and unique opportunities like this really fuel and build character and well-being in a community. Great. As a high school phys ed teacher, Cheryl has seen firsthand the impact that Erin and her circus school have had on the youth in the community. Devin Cobb is one of her students who has become involved in the circus school and benefited greatly from it. Great, slide back to your knee. It's my third time here and I like it because it's a new experience and I enjoy it a lot. Good job. Knowing what Erin offers through her circus arts is exactly what our young women need, which is a chance to develop their strength, use their strength, uh, express themselves. I think it builds self-esteem. I think it builds confidence. I think it builds uh, risk-taking. I hear so often, I could never do that, or maybe people have been told they couldn't do that, or they feel like they're not strong enough. Through you know work and dedication and practice, they get up there and it's a huge celebration and it's celebrating the good in life rather than all the comparison and negativity that can go on, especially in social media. Austin and I are rehearsing our duo trapeze act. I do not have my prosthetic legs on in the act. In the beginning, I felt ashamed and I felt like my body was ugly and I was hearing other people with limb differences also referring to their limbs as ugly. And it made me so sad. And then eventually, I think a friend pointed out to me, I posted a photo on social media. They said that they liked the way that my legs looked. And I started thinking about that and started thinking about how yeah, it's unique and it's not ugly. It offers a totally different shape and that's cool. Every body is different and has something to offer. It was a huge turning point where I started to really accept my situation. So I started to play around with taking the prosthetic legs off and that was 
freedom for me. That was where I really found what I was looking for in the air again. When it comes to duo trapeze, I really like the connection between the two of us um, and the different skills that we each separately have and are able to combine them to make cool shapes and do cool drops. And it's just a learning process that we get to go through together. We have been working on this act for less than two months, which is not a lot of time at all. And we have less than a week to go coming together, but we'll, yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. It's show day at Kingston Circus Arts. Erin and her students are busy setting up and getting ready for the dress rehearsal, hours before the show goes on. It's show day. Everyone is here, getting ready, putting on makeup. We're getting all set up, we're figuring out lightings, we just put all the chairs out. Everyone is helping out, setting up the rigging, warming up and taking care of any last minute details before the dress rehearsal. But one student is noticeably absent. Annie is really sick, unfortunately, so I'm sure she's really disappointed, but there's definitely a space for her in whatever shows we have in the future, and we'll just keep working on her piece and her story. With the show about to start in just a few hours, Erin and her students run through a complete dress rehearsal to work out any kinks still left in the performance. I feel really good about my routine. It was a little bit of a challenge because I am driving up from Philadelphia and I don't have a lot of time to be able to work on it in Philly. I was able to get some good practice time in yesterday and the day before, um, so I am no longer afraid of my drop, um, which, but still, I mean, it's a little, it's a little nervous. <laughs> After a successful dress rehearsal, the seats are beginning to fill up, and the show is about to begin. Welcome to the Kingston Circus Arts Cabaret 2020. Our show has also been enhanced for blind and partially sighted audiences. We have an ASL interpreter, and then throughout the performances, there will be a narrator, some done by myself and some done by other students. Um, people are welcome to move, people are welcome to make noise just to make everybody feel welcome. As Sarah is anxiously awaiting her turn, Austin puts on a show on the hoops. So far, Austin's shoulder is holding up, and he and Aaron still have their tandem trapeze to perform yet. Hands upside down, hands free, <laughs> fast spin. That was amazing, I thought it went really well. I had a lot of fun. Sarah performs tonight on aerial silks. The hardest part of the performance is being able to get out of my head in everything and that question of, am I good enough? Am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to hit my points? Um, so that's just sort of the biggest barriers in, in finding that confidence that, yes, I can. Wrapped arm, inverts. It's not just about the performance. It's about who I am in the world as a person. Deformed. So there's all of these things that I had felt my entire childhood, but I thought it was just me. So then realizing that I'm a part of this larger community, that there is the stigma against disability and there's these negative assumptions about me and what I'm able to do based solely on looking at me. Ugly. Stigma entangling me. Regardless of what my hand looks like and regardless of the messages that I've received about my hand, that it doesn't matter that I am still strong and powerful and capable. That's what I really wanted to build into the performance that I have. Upside down. What happens if I let go? Drop. I think it went really well. I'm really proud of myself. I was able to nail all the things that I wanted to. Seeing her tonight do what she did was just spectacular. I am so proud of her. It was incredible. In a short time, Austin and Aaron have put together a duo trapeze routine. It will be Austin's first duo trapeze performance. Austin upside down, hips on bar. Two months ago, he could not sit on a trapeze. It hurt, and he wasn't sure that that was what he wanted to do. And now here he was performing, and I am just so proud of him. It's 
tonight was amazing. It all came together. I was so proud of everyone. And if I had not been describing, I would have been crying the whole time. So it was a good thing that I was doing that. I'm just so proud of them all. They really just worked so hard. And yeah, I feel amazing and super honored. I think Aaron's school gives people an opportunity to go and, you know, fly freely like she does. You know, do what they love and not feel, you know, constricted by anything. She's a voice for people with accessibility issues, for people with prosthetics, um, and she's a voice for people who love the circus. It gave me a community, it gave me a lot of skills, so much, and I don't know where I would be without circus. I like how I get to shelter myself and scare my mom. Every time I leave here, I come so much stronger, so much more confident, um, and so much more amazing. And I'm just so appreciative to be learning from her and know that there is this pathway to adaptive circus and that we are working so hard to be able to build that and make that. And I'm so thankful to be a part of it. <laughs> I'm much more confident after working at circus that whatever happens or whatever challenges come up, I can probably figure out a way to do it. And I also know that there's lots of people that will have my back while I'm doing that. That leg goes up, the other one goes down. It makes my life joyful to be able to come here and to know these people. <laughs> and I can't imagine what my life would have been like if I hadn't been introduced to it. Fantastic story, fantastic human being, uh, fantastic school. When life hands you, you know, lemons, as they say, Erin's done more than lemonade with it. She's amazing. Producer, director, writer, Laura Lilly. Director of photography, David Woodside. Production manager, Carol Ashelman. Editor, Elise Rice. Narrator, Jim Van Horn. Post supervisor, Martin Paraga. Colorist, Martin Paraga. Post audio, Jack's Creative. Production accountant, Martin Saxton. Legal advisor, Allison Weiss. Coordinating producer Jennifer Johnson. Consulting producer Colette Vosberg. Regional content specialist Karen McGee. Integrated described video specialist Ron Rickford. Director production Karen I. Director programming Brian Purdue. VP programming and production John Melville. President and CEO David Arrington. Summerhill Media Inc. Produced with the participation of the Canada Media Fund. Copyright 2020 Accessible Media Inc.